South Carolina 30, Texas A&M 24. <sighs> Texas A&M has not scored more than 24 points against an FBS opponent since October 23rd of 2021 when they beat South Carolina 44-14. to Haynes King went out with an injury late. It was a weird injury, right? I don't know if you guys saw this, uh, but he went out. It He threw the football, and it looked like his arm popped out. It was really strange. Um, I just, I, that was a weird game. Weird game. South Carolina went up 17 to nothing in like five and change in the first quarter. Like, they, there was nine and a half minutes left in this ball game, and they were already up 17 to nothing. So Texas A&M, whose offense is not built to come back, had to find a way to come back. And they did a pretty good job of it. That defense is pretty good. Like, that defense is all right. I, I'm not, uh, you know, they're, they're not bad. They are not bad at all. But I look at this number, and the win probability went way up for South Carolina early, and they found a way to hold on to it. Shane Beamer is in Infectious. As far as his ability to hype up his team, get everybody believing. Uh, again, this is game on paper. Look at this. It, purple is bad. Green is good. There ain't. It, it's almost nothing but purple on this as far as EPA per play, success rate, yards per play, EPA per drop back, EPA per rush, uh, explosive play rate, third down success rate. Like, it, it's awful. These two teams were not good. South Carolina has found a way to capitalize when... Other teams are down. Texas A&M, certainly down. But this is still a massive win. Don't, don't let it tell you anything other than what it is. South Carolina is now 5-2 and two on the season. They have a win over Texas A&M, a win over Kentucky, and both of those, obviously, with backup quarterbacks, etc. Uh, we did get to see Connor Wigman for the first time, of course, A&M's backup quarterback. But South Carolina did all the things necessary to win this game. And this is huge for that program. Um, <laughs> Zone 6 said, what did you think about South Carolina going for the first instead of going up 12? Um, I I think it ended up being a really dumb decision. I don't know what analytic sheet you could look at that would make you believe that that was smart, in my opinion. I just I don't understand it. Uh, but I'm probably going to talk to Parker about it later and just try and figure out, like, what were they doing here? What was the what was the situation? Uh, special teams EPA for South Carolina really is what changed this game, 6.78. Um, <laughs> Humphrey, uh, y'all, y'all talking about the uh, Oklahoma TCU rosters and all that faux show. Look, South Carolina, this team, so 296 yards from scrimmage. 5.02 yards per play. Uh, I, I look at this, and, and I don't think that South Carolina outplayed Texas A&M. They had 4.8 yards per play to 5.3. Uh, 82 Atlantic said South Carolina has a legit shot to go 9-3. and three. I don't know about that, uh, because I, I, just, I just don't think that this team is great. You know what? Let's take a look. Da, 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 da. And let's look at their schedule. They got Missouri and they got Vanderbilt, so that could get you to seven. Yeah, you got to play at Florida. That's all right. So here's the deal: they've already got two losses. Do you really think they're going to go to Clemson and win? And and they host Tennessee. Those two, I feel like, are guaranteed losses. I don't know that they can beat a healthy Florida team, but they might be able to. Uh, the next two against Missouri and Vanderbilt, they could win them, but they could. They could just as easily lose those games. That's just something to something to watch for. So, but yes, I, I look at this Spencer Rattler, uh, twelve out of twenty-five passing, uh, one hundred sixty-eight yards. He didn't throw a pick, so that's good. That's uh, that's definitely definitely there. Uh, Humphrey said, "Props to Stogner for being a difference maker in the first half when points were being scored." He had three receptions for forty-six yards. Yeah, he did a pretty a pretty nice job. Uh, Marshawn Lloyd. To me, he was the star of the game. 18 carries, 92 yards. I'm dealing with allergies this morning. This is awful. Um, A-Chain had 20 carries for 99 yards and one touchdown for A&M. Overall, like, 
Entertaining game because it went back and forth so much, but there was so much scoring early, and then A&M found a way to come back and make a 17-14 in that first half. And, yeah, I mean, this was just a tight ball game all the way through. And A&M, even with the change of quarterback with Wigman, uh, couldn't get anything done. I mean, Wegman was uh, 8 out of 15 for 91 yards, which, by the way, South Carolina scored that touchdown to go up 30 to 21. You know, it got the extra point blocked. And I thought that thing was done. And instead, we get an onside kick and we get, you know, I, I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. Um, it was It was very strange. I will say that. Very, very strange. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.